how's everyone doing? Today I'll be reviewing 10 Cloverfield Lane. And if you've seen 10 Cloverfield Lane, definitely let me know what you think of it. And this is eight years after the original Cloverfield. I can't believe it's been that long already. Time flies. Now this isn't a direct sequel, prequel, or spin-off, but J.J. Abrams called this a blood relative to Cloverfield, and he's a producer here on 10 Cloverfield Lane. You should definitely look at 10 Cloverfield Lane as a standalone movie, though. And the movie is about the character of Michelle, who's played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who breaks up with her boyfriend and gets into a car accident and wakes up in a bomb shelter chained to the wall. And she's trying to figure out what happened. And then John Goodman comes in and tells her, this is my bomb shelter. I saved you from this car accident. There has been a terrorist attack outside or possibly a nuclear attack. There's a big explosion. Everybody that you know out there is dead. You have to stay down here for possibly a year to two years till it's safe outside from the fallout. And so she's taking this all in just shocked and she's not sure what to make of him, if what he's saying is real or if she's been kidnapped. And down in the bomb shelter, there's a third character, Emmett, played by John Gallagher Jr., who was excellent in Short Term 12. That's where I first recognized him. So Howard, played by John Goodman, whose bomb shelter it is, he took Emmett in as well. And as the story progresses, you're finding out more about the characters, especially the character of Howard, played by John Goodman. And you're kind of wondering, is he crazy? Is there really a nuclear war going on out there? You don't really know what to believe, and tensions are mounting all throughout. And this is director Dan Trachtenberg's feature-length directorial debut. He did the Portal short before, and this is a strong feature-length debut here. And John Goodman's character has been preparing for this for a while, and the bomb shelter is all decked out. It's got food to last for years down there. He's got a jukebox, he's got games, he's got a TV, he's got DVDs and VHS cassettes. So they're well prepared, but you do get a real sense of claustrophobia down there in the bomb shelter. You feel very trapped and it makes the tension palpable at times. You definitely are invested in certain characters and you're rooting for certain characters, but you also know how it's gonna play out with certain characters as well. And John Goodman is very imposing here, not just size-wise, but he's very controlling and he has these outbursts if things don't go his way or somebody irks him. That definitely drives up the tension level. And it really plays up the tagline here, monsters come in many forms. Would you rather stay in this bomb shelter bunker and face the monster and John Goodman or go out and face the nuclear fallout or possible monsters outside? 10 Cloverfield Lane is highly reminiscent of a classic Twilight Zone episode, and I thought this was a cool fact. Bradley Cooper plays the voice of the boyfriend Ben here in the beginning. Excellent story development, just so well crafted, very suspenseful and engaging, and it seemed to be made in secret. Ingenious marketing, it definitely paid off. The majority of the film revolves around the three characters of Howard, Michelle, and Emmett, and it is very dramatically paced, but still very thrilling the complete opposite of Cloverfield, where it was all action and explosions. Here, 10 Cloverfield Lane relies on dramatic tension, and it does so very well. And also, thankfully, no overload of shaky cam here, which I definitely appreciate. Bear McCreary's score for 10 Cloverfield Lane perfectly suited the film and helped heighten the tension all throughout. The characters are very cardboard cutout, copy and paste characters, but they're portrayed so well that you can look past it. The three characters definitely carry the film, and along with the uneasy feeling throughout and the sense of mystery of what's really going on out there. John Goodman is definitely one of the best parts of this film. He played that role just perfectly. Right off the bat, you knew he wasn't just quite right. He was creepy, but you weren't sure if he was trying to help and what if he was saying was true or not for what was going on outside. But wow, I did not expect for it to play out like it did, and his performance was just incredible. I was not expecting to play it quite to that level and I was definitely impressed there. The ending is going to be one that people love or hate which in turn will make you have those same feelings for the movie as a whole but you can't deny the incredibly strong performance of John Goodman as well as it being a well-crafted story overall. Definitely do not go into this film expecting a Cloverfield sequel, prequel, or spin-off. This is a standalone film. I personally loved the reveal at the end, but I didn't love how it played out. I wanted a little bit more from it, but still overall I very much enjoyed this film and was very surprised by it. 
Overall, I give 10 Cloverfield Lane an 8.5 out of 10 stars. If you've seen 10 Cloverfield Lane, definitely let me know what you think of it. Leave me a comment or video response down below. Hope everyone's doing well. Take care.